Okay, uh, al aloha. <clears throat> and uh, as, as the uh, longtime University of Hawaii rep uh, to ASP, uh, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to, to welcome all of you to Hawaii and hope you guys have a, just a great time here. And I think it's a, this is a different place uh, and I think you'll see a lot of different things here that you'll see other places, so, so really welcome. <clears throat> so today I'm just gonna talk to you about some research we've been doing in the past years on growing uh, vegetable crops by various non-circulating hydroponic methods. So let us first talk about lettuce. <clears throat> um, the first thing we're gonna do is kind of show a model non-circulating hydroponic system. We have a plant in a net pot on the left side and it's initially, it's, it's growing, in a, growing in a net pot. Uh, the bottom of the pot is placed in a body of water in, in nutrient solution and it's automatically watered by capillary action. As the crop grows, more roots grow. Uh, we have a, a large moist air space developing. The crop uh, uh, roots go into the water. And during all of this process, electricity pumps or wicks are not used. And uh, all the nutrient solution is added before the crop, uh, before, at the time you plant the crop. So you don't have to add water as you go along. So you put all the water and fertilizer prior to planting. Now, in the simplest system, the system we teach uh, kids, first graders, uh, matter of fact, I was just teaching some fifth graders how to do this the other day. Take a four liter bottle and uh, place a net pot in there, start a lettuce uh, seedling in there, and then I tell the students, just fold your hands and do nothing for six or seven weeks, and six or seven weeks later, most of the water is gone and you've got lettuce to eat. They're very simple. So in actual practice, here we have a Gatorade bottle. <clears throat> and uh, we put five or 10 grams of a hydroponic fertilizer here, a complete hydroponic fertilizer in there. And then we use some sort of a net pot, or we can take a, a forestry tube that has some holes in it, some sort of a net pot, or we can take some sort of a, a seedling block, like we have a foam seedling block, <clears throat> and place this in this bottle of water. And we put uh, aluminum foil on the outside to, to darken it, otherwise we'll get um, uh, uh, a lot of algae growth. Well, the bottom of this block is in water, so it's automatically watered. And so you don't have to do anything else. You just sit there and wait, and lo and behold, wait six, seven weeks, and you have a crop. And Bill, you may recognize this is Penn State. And uh, when I was there, my niece came to visit me, and, uh, and she's holding a, a, a lettuce that we had started. Uh, uh, we, didn't, we, we just placed the seedling uh, in the pot, we didn't add any additional water or fertilizer. The lower roots gathered the water and the nutrients. The upper roots gathered the oxygen uh, uh, from the moist air space. So very simple. So we got a brilliant idea. We said, well, if you can grow one plant in one bottle, gee, maybe if we had a bucket, you could grow three plants. <clears throat> and sure enough, it worked. <clears throat> and, and, and by golly, that, uh, that's, that, that's what happens. <clears throat> so the next thing we did, well, could you grow this commercially? Could you grow this in a tank of some sort? And here we have a tank where it was a wooden tank. The sides of the tank are wooden. And we use a uh, extruded uh, or expanded polystyrene top cover. You have some sort of a top cover, have net pots uh, in, in the nutrient solution. And sure enough, uh, uh, you start with seedlings, maybe two or three week old seedlings. And, and uh, uh, in, the, uh, in about 30 days from transplanting, you've got your lettuce and most of your water and fertilizer is gone. And, and, and you harvest and you start again. <clears throat> So in actual practice, we have here some two foot by, uh, you know, two foot by eight foot tanks with a styrofoam cover, I mean, an expanded polystyrene cover on it. And uh, they're growing in net pots. Um, uh, so it's just, in, in this styrofoam is supported by the, supported by the tank frame. Uh, here's a grower. What he did is to grow seedlings in oasis blocks. And then as the blocks started growing, uh, he separated them out. So this way he could grow, he could transplant two or three week old seedlings. So he would have less time in his growing tank. And he also could use a net pot like this that's just filled with a regular potting mix, regular, regular growing, a peat perlite type of growing medium. Now, uh, this guy uh, uh, has various crops in this greenhouse. Most of his tanks are about eight or 10 feet long, about three or four feet wide. And he has crops in different stages, and he, has, he, he sells to restaurants, uh, uh, different, he has various different markets. So 
Here he's got a red lettuce, and he's got some green lettuce, and various kinds of lettuce. So, he, so uh, he has a pretty good commercial business. Well, this is an interesting gentleman. He was a carpenter by trade. <clears throat> And uh, to save money, he didn't want to spend money on styrofoam or expanded polystyrene, so he, he took some weed cloth. I, you may know, know what uh, black weed cloth is, <clears throat> a weed fabric. And he stretched it over a frame just like an uh, artist would. <clears throat> and then burnt holes in and put his uh, net pots through those holes. Now his tank is very, uh, <clears throat> uh, very extravagant, um, <clears throat> if you look carefully. It's, uh, it's uh, made of a, a wood frame holding it up. He has some old roof iron uh, and then lines it with polyethylene and got uh, two by six lumber on the, on the, on the two, two by six on the ends and one by six on the sides. Very simple. So a lot of these systems can be very simple and yet they can grow gourmet quality lettuce. Now here's another grower that took um, uh, uh, pallets, wooden pallets, and he kind of cut them off, put cross bracing on, and uh, that became, a ta that became a, sort of a table. And then to make the tabletop, he took some old roof iron some old, uh, that we use around here. After, after, the, you know, after the roof has leaks in it and so on, they take, he got some of this roof iron. He has a tabletop and then put boards on the side, lined with plastic, you have a tank. Gourmet quality lettuce. All the water in up front, no electricity, minimum water use. We can grow a head of lettuce on a gallon of water. Uh, now, when we use... Uh, top covers of uh, styrofoam, this is actually is ex extruded polystyrene, they can bend, so we have, a, uh, <clears throat> we have a solution for that, we just put a pot underneath it, another plastic, a plastic solution, a plastic culture solution to a plastic culture problem, right Bill? Okay. And here's a grower who's been growing for quite a few years, he's probably been, been growing almost 20 years, uh, he originally was a liquor uh, uh, distributor and he got into the grocery stores and got, found out he could get very good prices for gourmet quality lettuce. He uses plywood top covers and has uh, uh, forest, forestry tubes. He was using forestry tubes. I'm not sure what he's using now. Now, all of this, the fertilizer for all of this, uh, uh, we use, we make stock solutions. We have, stock solution has calcium nitrate and uh, the other one has ChemGrow 81536 and, uh, and uh, magnesium sulfate. So this costs about $100 for these two stock solutions. We can grow about 5,000 heads of lettuce with that. That's about two cents a head. That's not bad. Uh, that's not bad. Okay, let us now go to cucumbers. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, a gynecious parthenocarpic variety. Everybody knows what that is. This, uh, these cucumbers were grown um, uh, there's a tank down there and um, uh, a wooden tank with ex expanded polystyrene top cover. And Bill, there are soda cans, not beer cans. There are soda cans. <clears throat> and they're growing cucumbers in the soda cans. He maintains about two inches of nutrient solution in there. And um, uh, we've got as much as 15 pounds of cucumbers out of a soda can. Here, the the other way we grow it is in a trash can, trash barrel. We take a forestry tube, put a, put a, forest, put a uh, uh, forestry tube in the trash barrels just so the bottom touches, the bottom inch touches. The plant grows beautifully, and it just, a uh, beautiful root system develops. It'll take the water down to about, uh, um, you know, maybe there's only a, uh, a couple inches of water. So you can start with 30 gallons of uh, nutrient solution, and pull 10 pounds of cucumbers out of that, and, and you don't have to add any water fertilizer in the process. And the beauty is we found a, a, a wonderful byproduct to this whole cucumber growing system. <clears throat> we found that we can grow beards with this. <clears throat> and this is, a, this is a, a Mike Orslick, uh, who uh, <clears throat> found that he could, have a, he could use the roots for a beard. <clears throat> we also can grow tomatoes, and this is some, a little system that I have at home. I bought the, uh, there's a, a cement tank there, a cement mixing tank on the bottom, uh, uh, probably three foot by two foot cement mixing tank, and I put, uh, oops, what do I do here? Uh, put a cement mixing tank, put some uh, expanded polystyrene on the top, put some um, uh, uh, pots, some sort of a net pot, they, 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 uh, they call them accelerator pots, and keep two inches of nutrient solution in there, and sure enough, I grow, this is a, happens to be a yellow variety, small variety. In this case, we have tomatoes growing in uh, four-inch pots, 10-centimeter pots of perlite. Just ten. Now, 
they have five centimeters, two inches of nutrient solution. Uh, that th These are sitting in two inches of nutrient solution. The ones on the left are sitting on an upside down tray. The ones on the right are sitting on the bottom. The ones on the right don't look at, well, okay, that's, excuse me, that's your left. Yeah, right. well, who's, who's way out? Yeah, that one. The one on, yeah, that, that right. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> the only way I know, I, I have a finger missing on my right hand, and, <laughs> and that's how I can tell the right and left. <clears throat> Uh, so anyway, um, sorry about that. Um, uh, uh, so I digress. Um, the, uh, the, the point is that the upside down tray works better because there's more air space. Just like there was, the air space was so important to the, to the lettuce, it's also important to the tomatoes. Um, now, tomatoes can grow in cans. They're, sure enough, they're growing in those cans. And they can also grow in pots, and these pots are sub-irrigated with two inches of nutrient solution. There is a, a drip tube that maintains a two inch, that's connected to a float valve that's main, that, that uh, uh, feeds the, uh, uh, th those pots of uh, media. Uh, here we have a sort of a sausage type. Uh, there is a, a two by 10 lumber that's supported by blocks. And on top of that is a tank, which is two by, a two by six tank, then there's a uh, uh, upside down nursery tray with net pot with, with uh, four inch pots on it. And, it and it sits on top of a screen and we can grow pretty good plants with this as long as we keep two inches of uh, good nutrient solution in there. Let's move to another crop that a lot of you probably don't know much about which is watercress, a very nutritious crop. Uh, here we have our guys are uh, filling net pots up with growing medium. And we have a very elegant uh, planter for watercress. <clears throat> we took a test tube and drilled, drilled the 564 hole, which is our second drill in, a, in your drill set. <clears throat> and we just sprinkle this out like salt. So you can sprinkle about 10 to 20 seeds per each pot. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and then we don't even cover these. Now, in this particular case, there, there's a tank that this uh, extruded polystyrene cover is floating. And you've got to use the extruded polystyrene cover because all the cells are uniform. If you use the expanded type, you have cracks and so on, and it, it gathers water. So you take an extruded polystyrene cover, which will float, and um, the bottom of the net pot will gather water. It will wet the, all the media. The seeds will germinate. And so, you, again, you don't have to do anything. You, you just let the water go down. Uh, now, the one on the right uh, is suspended the one on the left is floating. So you, they grow both ways about equally well. I think the, the, the floating one is probably slightly better. And on the back, uh, there's pretty good watercress growth. That's what watercress looks like probably about six weeks after seeding or so. <clears throat> and uh, our, our technician here is gathering it up just like your barber does when he cuts your hair. He gathers it up and he you know, kind of cuts it off. And Happiness, if you haven't found out what happiness is in life, happiness is, is our, uh, our ag techs who have just finished harvesting watercress. That's the definition of happiness. <clears throat> Let's move to ginger, which is a rhizome crop. A ry a rhizome crop. Here we have a pot and pot and pot system, <clears throat> and I'm not stuttering. We have an upside down pot in a pot with holes in, and that will conserve media. We want to use as little media as possible, and we put this in a no-hole pot, a pot with no holes, and sub-irrigate the no-hole pot. So the, we maintain about two inches of nutrient solution in the, uh, uh, in the system. So here in June 27th, plants are growing right along. By, July, by September, they're growing so uh, they're, putting, they're growing so well, they actually broke the pot. It takes a lot of pressure, a lot of hydraulic pressure to break a pot, but they actually broke the pot. Oops. And, and by golly, uh, by December, uh, the, 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 the pot, you can see the whole pot system there is 12 pounds. There's probably about, maybe about eight pounds of ginger in there. So this system grows, works quite well. <clears throat> um, the pots here are sub in this system, the, in another system, the pots are sub-irrigated in five inches of nutrient solution. So we got a pot sitting in a constant five inches of nutrient solution. And look at the beautiful uh, 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 ginger plant there. We have another system which um, we call it a sling. Uh, we have what we call a rollout bench. We just take, a, uh, we just take plastic, plastic sheet and we roll it out, bring the sides up, put some upside down trays in there, and take another piece of plastic, 
with holes in it. It could be weed, weed fabric. It could be various kinds of plastic. And, and, and we have this rigged up so the, the, uh, the ginger was just cut off. And the guys carry it just like they'd carry a body. <clears throat> uh, uh, it's sort of a gurney. <clears throat> and, uh, oh boy, I got to move pretty quick here. Uh, uh, so uh, and we got uh, a bunch of ginger from that. Uh, and here we grew it in a, in a uh, tray. The tray was level with, fertile, with, with media. And uh, it just, we had a huge amount of ginger to kind of grew up over that. We're growing taro. Oh boy, I got to go quick. Um, we have some tanks, which are nothing more than frames, lined with poly, and uh, there's October 20th, and by December, the, the, the taro is growing wonderfully. Taro is a crop in Hawaii. Growing potatoes here. Growing potatoes in a four-inch pot. Uh, here, it's growing in a uh, four-inch pot. It's kind of bursting out all over. Not a good way to grow potatoes, but it's a way. <clears throat> Here's another way we grow without media, where we, we wrap it in newspaper, make sure the newspaper touches the nutrients nutrient solution so it sub-irrigates itself, and we grew potatoes without media, without media, without soil. And here's another upside-down pot system and uh, upside-down tray system, and we grew uh, all blue and red potatoes and uh, um, uh, Yukon gold potatoes in a tray system, an upside-down pot system, and in a system where we just have some paper towel. We're just, we're just, we're just uh, uh, have capillary action. We have a model hydroponic garden concept where we take a garbage can that has water in it. Uh, you know, the float valve keeps, keeps it full of water. It goes to another float valve to, to uh, uh, so you have a two inch level and the water then goes into a tank and we put a, we put a bottom in the tank uh, uh, there and we just put pots of taro in there. Lo and behold, we have taro growing in this system. So you could have taro in one of these tanks, tomatoes in other, uh, beans and I mean, uh, well, lettuce, whatever. You have different crops off the same system. And here's growing tomatoes this way, uh, using that way. Uh, so anyway, um, we have more information. Uh, if, if you want to do a Google search on finding different ways of doing this, you can write this down, uh, write these different ways of, uh, 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 you know, you can find some more resources on, on growing uh, non-circulating hydroponic methods. But what I want to say is we grew various kinds of hydroponic, various kind of crops by simple non-circulating hydroponic methods that didn't require electricity or pumps and we used very minimal amounts of fertilizer, very minimal amounts of water, and we used maximal amounts of plastic. <laughs> and that's all I have. <laughs>